Hello, today Dion Molt is going to show us how to use the IFC CSV feature on uh, Blender Beam. So, um, IFC CSV allows you to um, export out a IFC data into a CSV file. And a CSV file is something that you can read in a spreadsheet software, uh, which you can then uh, modify and then re-import that uh, spreadsheet back into um, the IFC file. So this is quite a common feature with other BIM software where you can export out schedules of data from the BIM model, edit it in a external spreadsheet application, uh, and do bulk edits or use formulas or other types of automation and then re-import that data back. But um, previously, uh, this is not a common feature uh, with IFC. And if you want to edit an IFC model, um, you would have to open it up in an authoring application, which means that there's a import and export and it's slow. And very often uh, due to the lack of support of IFC, um, in many BIM applications, there would be lots of data loss during this process. So this is a very uh, clean way to modify IFC files without needing a full BIM application um, uh, in a very clean way. So I'll give an example here. Do we need to have installed the Blender BIM add-on for this? Yeah, the, the easiest way to use this is to install Blender and then install the Blender BIM add-on. Um, and then in the scene properties, which is on the bottom right hand mm -hmm. side, you can see a tab here. And there is a tab that says IFC CSV import export. And this is how you can uh, access it. And it comes bundled with the add-on. But um, if you are a, a more technical person um, and know how to run uh, command line applications, uh, you can actually install IFC CSV as a script or run it as a Python script uh, by yourself. So you don't need to use Blender at all. Uh, you don't need to import a file. You can run it uh, on a server. You can run it on Windows, Mac, or Linux. Um, so it's quite flexible and you can customize it as well. And you can run it as a library in your own application. But for, for most users, I would recommend uh, to get started to use it through the Blender interface um, just because it's, it's a bit more friendly. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Well, uh, for everybody who doesn't know about this, both Blender and the Blender BIM uh, add-on are uh, free open source uh, softwares. So you don't need to pay anything for it. You just download it and install it in your operating system and you, you use it. So I've just imported um, a small file, which is coming from another software in this case, it's coming from Revit. Mm -hmm. And you can see we have some walls and we have um, uh, some other random objects in it. We have a, a piece of ductwork. We have a, uh, a distribution element, which is incorrectly assigned as a uh, building element proxy. And uh, we have a piece of furniture in there as well. Yes. So uh, over here in the interface, one option you can do is you can click. So I'm clicking on a few objects right now and I'm pressing the eyedropper tool. And uh, this will automatically create a custom query uh, which filters elements in the IFC file to what I've selected. Mm -hmm. And then I can press the export IFC to CSV and I will call it a file called a uh, test.csv. And um, now if I open up that file, you can see it has imported a spreadsheet and there's one column in there which has three global IDs in there. Mm -hmm. And that corresponds to the three that I've selected here. So if I click on one of these and I check its object properties, you can see that it's got a global ID of one JF ending with S underscore T, uh, which is the first okay. item on that list. So at the moment, this is not particularly useful because I haven't exported any data but uh, I can add extra attributes that I'm interested in. So for example, I can ask what type it is as well as the name attribute. 
So now if I re-export that as test.csv and I reload this file, you can see that two more columns have been inserted. And now I have uh, a list of all of the names of uh, the, the walls. And now what I can do is I can make some bulk edits. So let's say these names don't make uh, any sense, which is true. Uh, you know, basic wall shouldn't be there. Um, this is not a very meaningful thing. And, and walls usually don't have names themselves. So this should probably be blanked out. But let's say we wanted to just call it interior block work. Um, I can change that and uh, save the CSV. And I can import the ISC, uh, sorry, import the CSV back into the IFC file. And now if I, I'll start a new document and I will import it again. And if I can remember where I had it, You can see that um, the object name has now been cleaned up and it no longer mm -hmm. contains the extra data relative to these ones, which um, are still messy. So that's that's the basic function. You can export a bunch of data, manipulate it, and then uh, re-import it. And, there's, and using it uh, relies on uh, the ability to create these filters. So just now I, I selected three explicitly but I can do the same and I can uh, export all walls. And I do that by typing in a specific query into this, um, into this uh, field here. So now if I run that again, you can see, here we go. Um, now I can do some sorting and cleaning up in Excel, or, or, or in this case, I'm using LibreOffice, which is a, another free software yes. uh, as an alternative to Excel. Now, so hopefully that helps demonstrate the capabilities, but it can also do a few interesting things that people don't realize. For example, uh, in other BIM applications, there are some attributes which you uh, cannot change. They're hard-coded, whereas ICCSV is quite flexible. So for example, if I didn't want this to be a wall, I can actually rename it here. And this is something that's not uh, possible with other applications, but this is a really good way of cleaning up IFC files that are badly um, uh, exported. So for example, uh, there is a building element proxy here. So what I could do is I could export out all generic elements by typing in this as a filter, IFC building element proxy. Mm -hmm. And I'll export that one out, reload. And this is a distribution board. So if I wanted to find out what a distribution board should be, I can go to the Blender BIM website. And under training and support, I can check which class should I use. So if I type in distribution here, uh, I can see there's IFC electric distribution board. So now I can just ooh, rename that. And I'm not sure how the formatting will play with it. Hopefully it will just work. I'll just paste it um, as unformatted text. Format. Yeah, it, it shouldn't it shouldn't matter, but uh, mm -hmm. things always break during live demos, so I'll I'll be careful. <laughs> so I'll save that. Uh, import that. So CSV actually doesn't allow any formatting, which is why uh, it, it shouldn't have impacted anything, but we'll just be careful. So I'll do the exercise one more time. Oops, wrong one. It's a, it's a different file. And now you can see that it's correctly reclassified as a, an electric distribution board. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So there you go. That's yeah. a quick demo. Uh, exactly there. If you can uh, stay there in the on the pan panel, there you have so many things. Are these all 
related to Blender BIM? Yes, they are, they are all related to Blender BIM. Um, I think in the future, uh, there needs to be a bit of a user interface. Um, yes, is it, possible think... to do that? is it possible to create some user interface and uh, integrate it somehow on the top, like like with the main uh, with the main uh, menu here? On the upper yeah, part? yeah. All of these can be moved or hidden or or shifted onto here or here. Um, it can all be redesigned, uh, just that um, at the moment, um, I think we're still focusing on functionality. Mm -hmm. So, sure, so, that, sure, sure. so that will come. Uh, definitely, I definitely understand that uh, it, there are more critical things that need to be made first. Yeah, and um, so this is just another feature of Blender Beam. We can put it this the, way as well. Yeah, that's right. And I, and I think... Um, it, it's quite a powerful auditing feature as well. Um, so what I just showed were very simple examples of, of selecting some objects and also uh, selecting elements. But I can also do things like, um, I think it's called uh, export out type elements. So these aren't um, actual uh, individual objects, they're object types. Mm -hmm. And that can, um, so, I'll just give it two attributes here. Uh, this is something, some uh, another example of data that you can export out from it. Um, so here I can see all the wall types in my um, in my model. So I think uh, auto filter. If I sort this. For example, I can say here, there are two door types. Here's one wall type and here's one furniture type. And I can see sort of inconsistencies in the naming scheme. Mm -hmm. And just in, in one go, I can uh, do a bulk um, cleanup of, of the naming. Uh, and you can do this to any IFC class. It can be even something like um, coordinates, although editing coordinates in Excel or spreadsheet is probably not the way to go, but but you could theoretically do it. it it's that flexible. And the queries can also contain uh, other types of filters. So for example, if I wanted uh, ICL all, all type elements where the name includes um, foo in the name, and then I re-export that, Um, you can see it's it's isolated to just this one furniture type, which has the name of Fubar. So it's um, possible to build very complex queries, and you can ask questions like, "Give me all uh, precast slabs on the ground floor of the building uh, that uh, are of a particular slab type." And you can ask these very complex questions, but uh, at the moment it requires learning a special uh, query syntax. Mm -hmm which uh, you can do online. I'll just uh, point it out over here. So here uh, on this page, it, it explains the query syntax and it gives some examples. So um, what if you want to find all slabs that have a net volume greater than 10, for example? or walls which have a particular fire rating uh, and combining and and or and brackets and things like that. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that makes a bit yeah. of sense. Yeah, yeah, that sounds uh, interesting and uh, is, is definitely, uh, it can be very useful for uh, who uh, might be interested to try it. Thank you for okay. uh, showing me around. Thanks very much.